Hey there, I received a question in the last live stream about uh, doing a video on calculating the Hearst exponent. And I don't really have time to go into any sort of detail on how it's calculated, but I want to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to reference a website called Quantstart, which goes into quantitative finance. And uh, on the website, he gives a snippet of code which can be used to calculate the Hearst, uh, Hearst exponent. So what I want to do is go over that snippet and just say how the calculation is done and how it works and then point out some practical issues that you're going to encounter as an actual trader, as a retail trader, and why this may not be a super useful thing to look at. But still, if you're interested in quantitative finance, it might be something you want to uh, learn about. So let us jump into a notebook and get into it quickly. So here is the notebook. Here is the article I'm referencing on this website called Quantstart. It's pretty good. Actually, I've kind of um, known about it for years. It's in this article, Basics of Statistical Mean Reversion Testing. And the piece in general, the piece we're going to actually look at is somewhere down here. Here it is, um, the Hearst exponent. So here is the code snippet and and yeah so that's what we're going to look at here i've also included a link to the wikipedia article on the hearst exponent uh, there are many different ways to calculate it they all give slightly different answers so again how useful this is going to be for you i do not know when we get into the actual code here we're going to have to fit what's called a power law that something's going to have to have something that's going to have the form y equals x to some um, power and we wish to know what that power is so rather than doing a nonlinear fit, we can linearize this by taking the log of both sides. So here I plot this function here and we wish to determine what that alpha is. If we take the log of the left side, log of the right, right side, we get basically the equation for a straight line. Well, not basically, it is the equation of the straight line. So this is our new variable. I call it down here V. What we're interested in this a variable and this log x is our new variable u. So this is the equation of a straight line and if here if we plot it um, we get something that looks linear if we plot it on a log log plot. So when we do this code we're going to be interested in this kind of power law relationship so that's why the code is going to do this log um, uh, it's going to do a linear regression on the log of various data sets. So the quant start code so the Quantstart code is going to calculate the Hearst exponent, which is given here by a capital H, in this, in this type of way here. So we're going to look at the variance. How do I want to say this? We're going to look at the variance as a function of this parameter tau, which is the lag. Um, and that's given by this expression here. And I just wanted to point out we're calculating the variance because, again, in the code, it calculates standard deviations. And I just want you to know where that is all coming from. This variance here is a function of lag is proportional to lag to this to some power. And traditionally, it's written as this 2h here. So if this were a geometric Brownian motion, kind of a random walk type of situation, this 2h would be equal to 1 or h would be equal to 1 half. If it's mean reverting, it should be less than a half. If it's a trending series, it should be greater than 1 half. So this is basically the quant, quant start code. Um, I've made a couple modifications here. I wrote a line here so I can change the number of lag steps if I want. And uh, for plotting purposes, I also want to return lags and then this variance function um, tau. So the code here takes in a time series. So that'll be your price data. It calculates the number of lags. So this is just going to be uh, a sequence of numbers from 2 to, to n lags, which is going to be 100 here. So it's just 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 100, or all, all the way up to 99 in this case. And then we're calculating this variance here. Um, and this is just done via this simple, simple uh, list comprehension. And then we just do the linear fit. And again, the reason we're doing the log and logs is because we're going, um, we're, our assumed relationship up here is a power law. So that's all there is to it. And then we just return that um, fit coefficient at times two. And then I also return this vector of lags that's given here and um, the variance, which I called tau down here. Now, 
he does a like basically a test of this very against various um, sequences. So this is just basically taken from his code here. The only change I made was to put in a variable number of points here. So he used a hundred thousand. So this is the geometric Brownian motion. This is uh, a mean reverting sequence, and this is a trending sequence. So down here, I call the function here. I get the Hurst exponent, and then of course I return the lags and the um, and the variances. So if we print that out here, we get for the geometric Brownian motion a number that's pretty damn close to uh, 0.5. It's actually not, it's a little bit under 0.5. For the mean reverting, we get a number that's clearly less than, or it's right here, it's clearly less than 0.5. And then for trending, we get a number that's above 0.5. So it's kind of linear on this. There's some uh, structure to that, but that's to be expected. The more data points and the more your model actually fits that power law, the more linear this is going to be. So down here, I take a look at SPY. This is, I don't remember when this data was downloaded, but it's basically in the last few months. So it's the last uh, 30 plus years of SPY. We're going for, on 40 years now. Uh, and we calculate our Hurst coefficient. So here we get something that's 0.42 and I do not know how st statistically significant this will be. This is on the order of 0.5, maybe a little bit less suggesting mean reversion. But if we plot our data here on a log-log scale, uh, I don't know how clear this is going to come on this screen, but there's some definitely non-linear structure here. Uh, plus the fact that over the many decades, I would expect the S&P 500 to be more of a trending data sequence. But in any case, um, you can use this log-log plot to kind of get an idea of um, how well our model fits, as we mentioned before. So as I said before, this log-log plot can give us an idea of how linear um, this is or how much of a power law it is. Um, and it's going to depend a lot on the data set used. Uh, this is using basically 40 years of data. If we use the last year, so let's go back up here and just say the last, uh, there are 252 trading days in a year. So let's go minus 252 to the end of the sequence. We calculate it again. We get um, what looks like a strongly mean reverting series. But if we plot the... Um, if we might do this plot here, we can see. So we see that this is not really a power law because we have all this structure here. Um, we don't even really need to do tests for statistical significance because we know that this, this model here doesn't really fit a power law. So that's what you can find in practice is that you're not going to have enough data or the data needs to be in over a small time range. And yeah, so you're going to get something like this. So again, I don't find it very useful. However, it is an interesting uh, concept to, to learn. So there's that, I guess. So I'm not going to do an outro. Uh, sorry, I couldn't do a more thorough video going into the mathematics and the statistics of all this. But um, I've been really, really impressed for time this last uh, couple years. And it shows no sign of slowing down. So I will see you when I see you. And take care.